Jared, how you doing today? Let's see that new bracelet Yo. you're just showing me. Yeah, I have a new bracelet. Check it out. Look at that. Some high roller stuff right there. I like it's, it. Uh, it's from Lazaro. I get all my jewelry from Lazaro. I'm not familiar. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not in the jewelry game. So, how high end is that? Uh, it's pretty high end. I mean, I would say like out of men's jewelry, there's Lazaro and Chrome Hearts. Uh, most people have probably heard of Chrome Hearts. Lazaro just has one store in Soho. Um, I I bought so much stuff from there. I know the owner. Um, so it you know, he's he's a great guy. He's I, I talked to him once. He had a great story. When Hurricane Sandy hit, um, he put all of his inventory in two duffel bags and walked all the way up to the Upper West Side, like basically like 10 miles with basically carrying millions of dollars of jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Uncut Gems, that movie? No, I want to see it. I want to see it. super good. It. That just sort of reminds me of it. Yeah. It's a really good movie. You should check it out. Well, we are three weeks until election night. You still planning yep. on trading that night? Not only am I planning on trading, I'm going to publish at midnight. I saw that. That's exciting. I yeah, will be up for that. People are excited about that. Like I, I kind of floated it out there in the newsletter and everyone's like, oh yeah, you got to publish at midnight. So definitely. Um, yeah. I'll be following you on Twitter too. I'm sure you'll have some good stuff. Yeah. I think the second podcast we ever recorded, we kind of talked about voting a little bit. Have you changed your stance now that you kind of see where this thing's going? You no, I don't, I don't vote. Not doing it. Vote. No. Since when? Uh, 2004. Yeah. That's the last time I voted. And, okay. Um, if you want to read about my views on this, I have a Substack up called "You Don't Have to Vote." No, yeah, so I've read it. Sure, you've read it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just so, was wondering if maybe seeing this financial illiteracy going on, if maybe you were leaning one way or the other and thought maybe you would give it a go. But let me put it this way: if there was a candidate that I liked, where I knew I wouldn't regret my vote a year later. I would vote, but I don't do this lesser of two evils voting. I think yeah. that gets us in trouble. It does. You know? Yeah. It's a bad way to look at it. Yeah. All right. Market headlines. This is from the front page of the wall street journal this morning, private equity pours millions into HVAC plumbing trades. So the opening lines of this article, I thought were funny. Aaron rice has two logos tattooed on his left leg. One from the plumbing business he co-founded more than a decade ago, and another from the private equity-backed company that recently bought it. What do you see about private equity right now? I mean, you just launched a new microsite, shortprivateequity.com. Can you maybe explain a little bit about what that's about, how it uh, backs up your thesis? Private equity has rolled up all the obvious stuff, and now they're getting into mom-and-pop businesses like HVAC companies and stuff like that. Um, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of different threads here. And the one that, I mean, everybody's talking about the private equity angle, but the one that nobody's talking about is the fact that you have plumbers and HVAC guys that are now worth eight figures because of this. And these are guys that didn't go to college. You know, um, they said, gee whiz, I could go to college and end up with 200,000 in debt and be waiting tables, or I can get a job as a plumber and be making $60,000 and someday open my own company and sell it to private equity. And now you're living in a gated community. Like it's, it's great. You know, it's funny because I have uh, an intern from about six years ago, this guy named Christian who went into investment banking after he worked for me, he was an investment banker for about five years and then he quit and bought an HVAC company. And that's what he does. And his HVAC company, it's local. They're based in Merle's Inlet. And they built the geothermal system that I have in my house. So, I mean, they're fantastic. It's a great company. I mean, he's a stud. Like, he runs it great. And he's probably going to make more money than I am. You know, I mean, it's ridiculous. We have had some people write in about the time horizon for a private equity short to play out. Can you kind of reiterate that this is this is definitely a longer term thing and it's speculative. This is not an overnight get rich quick scheme. Yeah, I mean, the difference between this and the housing bubble is the housing bubble was all in listed stuff, right? Like it's all mortgage-backed securities that traded not on an exchange, but OTC, derivatives that traded OTC. It was all stuff that was marked to market. 
So when there were impairments, they were passed through the system very quickly and there was a liquidity event and everybody had to sell. Private equity, that's not the case, right? Like these funds are locked up for 10 years. Um, there's really, I don't want to say there's no circumstance in which you'd have forced liquidation of portfolio companies, but it's unlikely. So this is going to play out over a long period of time. Now I tweeted, retweeted uh, yesterday. There was some account that had a report of distress at certain PE companies, like level of defaults and stuff like that. And it ranked them. Apollo was quite high in the list of defaults. Um, if you go through my timeline, you'll find it. So there, there are cracks starting to show. Um, but you know, it's funny when I first put the trade on in December of 23, I thought that I picked the top and it was going to collapse imminently and I would make a ton of money and it hasn't worked out that way. And actually now a year later, I think it's going to take even longer. Next headline, worldwide efforts to reverse the baby shortage are falling flat Subsidized minivans, no income taxes. Countries have rolled out a range of benefits to encourage bigger families with no luck. This article from the Wall Street Journal asks, imagine if having children came with more than 150 k in cheap loans, a subsidized minivan, and a lifetime exemption from income taxes. Would people have more kids? The answer, it seems, is no. What do you make of this? Is this push to incentivize people into having children by dangling tax ex exemptions in front of their face. Well, first of all, I actually wrote about this in, in, the, in the dirt nap today in Poland. So Poland has a policy where if you're a household and you have three kids, you don't have to pay any income taxes for the rest of your life. Now, obviously, obviously this is more valuable to people who pay a lot of income taxes, right? Like for me, you know, I don't like kids. I hate kids. I don't like babies. <laughs> I don't like toddlers. I don't like, kids. Sorry, I don't, you know, and like some people are like, why do you hate kids so much? I'm like, well, why do you hate spiders? <laughs> like, it's like I go over to your house and you're like, oh, I have this spider. And I'm like, I don't like spiders. You're like, oh, you like my spider. Like, this is a really good spider. <laughs> like, I don't like kids anyway. So, but given the amount of taxes that I pay, if someone said to me, okay, if you, if you have two kids, you never have to pay taxes ever again, I would actually consider it. I would consider it. Really? I would. You get a, a spider. Lot of, a lot of money. Yeah. Um, what's going on with Trump and this auto loan thing? Because I saw you wrote about that as well. Yes. So Trump wants to make auto loan interest tax deductible, kind of like mortgage interest is tax deductible. He wants to make car loan interest tax deductible, which, I mean, I don't, it, it is what it is. Like there's... If you go back to the 70s, all kinds of stuff was deductible. Credit card interest was deductible in the 70s, right? Which is That's crazy. wild. Yeah. yeah. Basically, if you make car loan interest tax deductible, more people will itemize deductions, which kind of does the opposite of what the Tax Cut and Jobs Act did, which was raise the standard deduction and make it so that 91% of people were taking the standard deduction. So, and we, we generally want people taking the standard deduction. So only, only really only rich people itemize, but if you have car loan interest that you can deduct, you're going to have more people itemizing deductions. Last headline here. Let's get into inflation a little bit. Used cars and some groceries. Here's where prices are easing up as inflation cooldown continues. So Americans plagued by rising prices the past three years got another promising sign last Thursday as inflation registered the lowest annual reading since February 2021. CPI, including groceries, gas and rent, rose 0.2 percent in September over the previous month, slightly higher than economists expectations. Prices rose 2.4% compared to a year ago, also a notch above predictions. You have said before that 2025 could be a big year for inflation. Do you st still think we'll get a resurgence? And if so, what does that mean from an investing perspective? We're supposed to stay vigilant on inflation. We didn't. Uh, we, we started to become worried about growth. So the Fed cut rates. Um, inflation is going to come back. That's my call. Um, it's going to come back hard and, um, you know, in the funny thing is I actually saw a, a chart recently of inflation expectations 
And even though inflation is going down, inflation expectations are actually going up. Uh, and I'm not really sure why that is. Um, but for some reason, it, it just happened in the last couple months. In the last couple months, people have started to expect higher inflation. We're going to get more inflation. Let's go to stocks here. I see the S&P is... It's up on the day. I start, It started strong in the morning. NVIDIA is up over 3%. I found this funny Wall Street Bets post that goes, how can the market keep going up forever like this? It feels way too good doing nothing every day and getting rich because the market keeps pumping. Every bear I've seen ends up dead. Even Michael Burry was forced to admit he was wrong. I feel like something has to give soon and the party has to eventually end. You agree with that or I mean that's that's kind of not wrong. Like dumb people get rich in bull markets, right? And just like you said, it's easy, right? Like it's yeah. it, it, it's it's e just you're just long stocks, you just hang out every day, you make more money. Like it's the easiest thing in the world. Um when trading starts getting easy, I start getting nervous, right? Like usually it's hard. Um so yeah, I mean look, like I'm not bearish on stocks right now. I think we rally into the election. I think last week we talked about how we were kind of in a range. And, you know, what happened was is that Trump pulled away in the polls and the market started to rip. Um, so I think we're, you know, assuming Trump uh, continues to lead, I think we're going to continue to rally into the, uh, uh, into the election. By the way, a uh, new thing going around on Twitter. I don't know if you know who Christopher Rufo is, but, um, he's the guy that uh, came up with all the plagiarism allegations against Claudine Gay, right? Right. Well, apparently he now has plagiarism allegations against Kamala Harris for a book that she wrote uh, about crime. I think it was like 10 years ago. Um, I, apparently she pulled a bunch of stuff from Wikipedia. And so this this news is like hours old, um, but this is, this is going to blow up and... Uh, Anyway, long story short, I think the market's going to continue to rally into the election, assuming Trump maintains his lead. All right, going to the week ahead, big week for uh, big bank earnings. We had J.P. Morgan and Wells Fargo recently, and we've got Goldman Sachs, City, and Bank of America on Tuesday, and Morgan Stanley due Wednesday. Any thoughts on bank stocks right now and how they've been performing recently? The only one I looked at was J.P. Morgan. Um, J.P. Morgan gapped up like 5%. and Apparently, one of the reasons was their net interest income is going higher. Basically, the yield curve is steepening and banks are making more money off a steeper yield curve. Um, and if you think the curve is going to continue to steepen like I do, then you probably want to be long bank stocks. I haven't bought a bank stock since like 2012. Um, I just, you know, uh, there's really not a lot of growth there. They're highly regulated institutions. I kind of don't get the attraction. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, assuming the curve continues to steepen, banks are, I mean, for, let me put it this way. If Trump won in three weeks, banks would probably be one of the best performing sectors for sure. Well, you're going to New York here this week, right? Book signing? Yeah, leaving tomorrow. How long are you going to be there? I'm there Tuesday to Friday. Do you know, have you ever heard of The The? No. So The The was a band from the 80s, English band. My, it, You know I love electronic music, but this is, out of non-electronic music, this is my favorite band of all time. And I've never seen them live. Uh, I had an opportunity to see them in 17 or 18, but I got hit by a hurricane and I couldn't get out. Um, and I was really, really bummed. So now I get to see them live um, at the Beacon Theater in New York. So very cool. Well, I have finished Night Moves. The bookmark is gone. Complete. <laughs> well done, sir. Very much enjoyed it. <laughs> Beyond love. Great story. That's probably my second favorite. That's yeah. my second favorite. I yeah. loved it. Loved the ending. I don't want to give it away, but. And it's a great ending to the book, too. It's a great it last story. It yeah. really is, yeah. I like Seaboard Street a lot, too. Yeah. Seaboard Street's about the Dirty Myrtle. The Dirty Myrtle. Yeah, is is Myrtle Beach really like a heroin capital? Yeah, the, it is. Is it yeah. really? Oh, that's yeah. bleak. Oh, that's rough. I was about to say, this beard is getting insane. I, I'm starting to look like the main character from Whitman School. 
need to, <laughs> need to shave this thing. <laughs> what did you think of the Whitman School? That's a really interesting uh, concept. Is that the one you were telling me was based on a real story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I liked it. I loved all the Appalachian Trail stuff because I've hiked it a couple times. So it was... You hiked the whole thing? No, no, no. Just sections of it. Okay, so I uh, I have hiked from the Pennsylvania, New Jersey border to the Massachusetts, Vermont border. Not all. I, I did it a week at a time, three different weeks. So. Nice. Yeah, I haven't been on in a while, but it's it's amazing. So scenic. Any last thoughts? Want to wrap this thing up? Get out of here. We got some newsletters and stuff to work on. Pick you up night moves. Book. Yes. Your book. Uh, I do have another book signing in Nashville on um, October 30th. So if you miss the New York book signing, you can catch me in Nashville October 30th. So, but if you're not coming to any book signings, get night moves. It now has 52 reviews on Amazon, 50 or five star. I saw that. That's great. Congratulations. Yeah. All right, Jared. Well, thank you for your time. We'll talk here again soon. Take care. See you.